when I was a kid, I guess everything just about had a car as a character at that time, you know. If you didn't like cars, you liked the show it was in or, you know, the, the actors or something, you know, it kind of, instead of just a car, it had a connection. You know, a lot of that stuff brings back memories, you know, more than just one way. My name's Lisa, I'm from Connor, Texas. And I'm Michael, and I'm from Bay City, Texas. My name is Celia, I'm from Dallas, Texas. And my name is Ibrahim, I'm from Dallas, Texas. Brantley Youngblood, I'm from Jackson, Tennessee. I've had them any country you can think of, anywhere. I've had them from everywhere. Sure, Penny Hellstrom, I'm from Northern Manitoba, Canada. I look at uh, uh, roadsideamerica.com and road trippers, those kind of sites, so when I plan out my road trips, through those and this one popped up and I told the wife, I said, this one looks really cool. Uh, we were traveling between Memphis and Nashville and we were looking up things on the internet and, and we seen the ad for, for Rusty's. We're all big movie fans. They love Fast and the Furious. We love Back to the Future. We love Batman. Batman. All the ones in here. <laughs> They're really awesome, Mostly every single one. Mostly this race, I really love it. Um, the Herbie car right away when I came in the door, yeah, for myself, and uh, I noticed that right away. I saw Knight Rider, and I'm like, that's a big big chunk of my childhood was watching Knight Rider. The Batman one, the Batman one. <laughs> the one thing about being in Jackson and people come to see you, they're coming to see you. If I was in Branson or, or Gatlinburg or something like that, you know, they're looking for tourism, you know, spots. You know, it's just something that they're walking past me. But they come to see me, they're, they're coming to see it because they want to see it, you know. So that, that's one good thing about it. Some of them, some of them are replicas, and uh, some of them, that's the only way you're going to have it, is uh, like the Ghostbusters, uh, the Ecto-1. There's no, Sony still has the original car. There's no way to have it, you know. So. That's, that's what you gotta do. You can find anything you want to on, on the internet now. Any measurements, you know, they got these programs where you could take the size of a hubcap. Like I know this hubcap is 14 inches wide. Then they, it will tell you every dimension on the rest of the car. You know, there's no guessing anymore. Some of it you just had to make, you know, there wasn't no, nothing you could go pull off a shelf. So I made the rack twice. I, the one that's on it now is aluminum. At first it was made out of steel and well, you wouldn't think that that would be that heavy, and it was so heavy, it, you couldn't put it, by the time you put all the stuff on it, it probably crushed the roof in, so I had to redo it in aluminum. The only things that, that don't run and drive is the futuristic stuff, like the car that's from 2015, Back to the Future, and the draggy look, it could run, it's just, there was no use of making it run, so it's got an empty block in it, you know, but you, you could have it probably run in a couple of days if you wanted to, but General Lee, probably more people think more of, of the General Lee than they do the actors that was in the show. It's probably more popular than the actors that was in the show. It's, it's the most recognizable car in the world. And it's, you know, back then especially, you know, it, people would step over top of a Ferrari to get to it, you know. That was something I always wanted. I always wanted General Lee, and uh, I traded for one, 22 somewhere, and kept it a while and sold it and wish I never sold it. And then I think the DeLorean was the next thing I got and just, it just kept going and going, you know, and, you know, my dad would help me, you know, he helped me get the Batmobile. You see a 21 foot long Batmobile to stop traffic. One episode of A-Team is like filming a whole movie these days, and they've done it every week, you know. That's a lot of money, you know. There was those, those real stunt guys, real vehicles, real explosions. Uh, Quentin Tarantino did Death Proof, 
and he wanted the old stunt man. He wanted real stunts. He wanted full speed, you know. And you watch that, you know. The first, the movie's a little slow, but you get to where the chases are, man. Those are some major stunts. And, and Buddy Joe Hooker is doubling Kurt Russell. You know, they're cannon stunts, blowing the cars. A lot of work went into it. Sometimes some of the stuff really bothers you when you're a car guy. You watch Fast and Furious and you see, you know, him running two tanks of nitrous through it. A car guy like me knows that that car couldn't take that. And even like Paul Walker and the actors, they know that they might not like it and they know it's not the way, but, you know, 16-year-old kids or, you know, people that don't fool cars all the time, they think, you know, that's amazing, you know what I mean? So they, they had to just let it go and not be so upset about it. This is a great way to bring back a bunch of memories. I mean, I think all the boys have been yelling the whole time they've been in here, going, oh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I don't even know if they've actually soaked in what's all here yet. <laughs> Most time, it's either, you know, Batmobile General Lee, or Fast and Furious, uh, girls are gonna like the Mystery Machine. That's, that's probably the girls' favorite, you know. Uh, younger kids, they like the Death Race Mustang. I had a group of kids come through yesterday, and it's just, that's their, you know, 16, 20 years old, that was, you know, that was one of the main ones that, you know, it's so wild looking. It's really nice to know that there's a place that you can come to and see the cars. The real thing. You know, real. exactly, and really get to see it, you know, close up. Like I said, it's just pop culture, you know, and then you got the car guys that just like cars, that like cars and the shows, and then you got people that just like the shows. Oh yeah, both. I've always been a big movie and car guy, for sure. And, uh, it's just really impressive here. There's a lot more than I ever thought there would have been, that's for sure. I don't know, it brings back a little bit of memories from your childhood. You know, for five dollars, I don't know what you can do much better. I tried to make it twenty dollars would get a family of four in there. I don't mind them, you know, getting their picture with something. This is really, yeah, that's the really car and they can't believe they're even sitting in it, you know, so it, it, that gives you a little, you know, feel good stuff there too. They like to sit clutch. I love cars and I just like to see people's reaction. I like to hear them. It gets people excited just to see them. So I get a kick out of that. I think just seeing the excitement that my kids have, seeing the same movies that I seen whenever I was growing up and then seeing the cars from them. Uh, it's just, it's a big hug for my childhood. It's a really big hug. I always like drew cars, you know, in church. It, the, the teachers would send the pictures to my mom in, in kindergarten. I, I don't know, just infatuated them with some kind of way. I don't know if had it in me from the get-go. It wasn't something that just happened. I don't think at that time they really knew how bad I had it, but you know, she, she would always, like I said, they'd always support whatever I wanted to do. You know, I can remember my dad, he, he, the first, he always wanted a new truck. He, it, he, he, he always said, I want to smell the paint burn off the engine one time. That's what I, he wanted to do. So I can remember him getting a brand new four-wheel drive uh, pickup, and uh, I still got it. it. It needs fixing up, but it was the first truck he ever bought, and I really thought that was something, you know, in my mind. Uh, he'd give it to me when I turned probably 14, and I fixed it up at that time. He seen how good it looked again, because he had worked completely out, and. Uh, he said, what can I do to have my truck back, you know, since it was fixed up? And I said, if you get me a Mustang, and this was a 416, I said, I'll trade you, you know. So that's how I ended up getting the Mustang back there. Uh, they had the, the local high school bonfire one night uh, at, the, at the school, and after, the, after everybody kind of went down to a little grocery store out south side, and my car caught on fire. I mean, literally, it almost, if the guy hadn't come out, it would have burnt to the ground. My call, my dad, he come to get me, and all the guys, they was really giving the car a hard, hard time, you know, calling it everything you could think of. And my dad pulled up right when it was going on. He heard them, you know, saying this, that, and the other about the car. And got it home, and got it where it run again. And he was, thinking back, he was probably worried about me driving it because of the shape it was in. So one day, uh, he said, can you help me? He was a plumber. And, I, it was a Saturday night and I couldn't go nowhere. My car was messed up. He said, he said, it only take a minute to pull up in his yard and it was, man, a sharp Mustang GT sitting in the front yard and uh, everything you could want on it. 
and he went in the house and I'm still thinking we're fixing to do some work, you know, and he comes out, he said, you like that car? I said, yeah. He said, it's yours. And from that moment on, some people paid a price with it that was, cause it was a pretty quick car. So I, I let some people have it after that. I was drag racing and got caught. They got us out of the car and cuffed us and put us in the back of the car. Me and the other guy are sitting in the back of the car and I said, you know, I said, they're just scared us out of you know. That guy, he, he called a Bell's Bonds and, and I told him, whatever you do, please get a hold of my dad, you know. This was a Friday night and my dad left me in jail from Friday night all the way till Saturday night. He come late Saturday night, he went to work, everything, he wasn't worried about it. They brought me out front, I was in handcuffs and he said, I only want to know one thing. And I said, what's that? He said, what kind of bird don't fly? I said, a jail bird. And that's the last time I was in there. From 16 on, I was probably trading, buying, you know, stuff. I would get something, fix it up, swap it off, or I'd find something, sell it, make a few bucks, buy something else and the whole time getting better and better. You know, you would trade up, you know, always trading up. My dad seen me making some, some money off of it. He said, hey, if you see something, you know, let me know and, I, you know, you get it. I'll, I'll, I'll get put the money in, you put the labor in, you know. And then we'd get stuff like this, like these, these cars in here, and we knew that we shouldn't get rid of them, you know. I was always looking behind a house, or when I'd go with him on a job, first thing I was asked, you got any old cars, you know? And, that's where a lot of them come from, is just getting lucky, you know. I grew up probably about 13 miles from here, and I moved up here when I was like 14. And my mom and dad lived around the corner. And, you know, once I got out of the house, I moved into this house here. Eventually, we built these shops, you know, started out a couple and then added on. It started out as just a place to put everything, you know, and this is about 140 feet long, uh, 60 feet wide, and so. Start out just a place to keep everything. First we were gonna work on it in here and then you get your stuff in here and you don't want it. So we built another little, uh, dad had seen some stuff where it looked like an old town. So we tried to make the other buildings look like a, a old street, you know. And uh, they're really, they, on the inside they're just garages, you know. But the outside sides of them look like uh, like old, old buildings, you know. So we was just kind of going with the theme. Like most of these cars right through here, these are just old original cars, but they're all odd. You know, most time when you see something from the, the early the late 1900s, early 20s, 30s, they're a Ford. They're, they built millions and millions of them. Uh, the Franklin, you know, it's super odd. It's a uh, air cool motor. The, the, the grill is fake. When they first started making them, they didn't even have a grill in them and people wouldn't buy them because they're used to seeing a grill. So the people, you know, put a grill on it, but it's, a six cylinder air crew cool motor, uh, like aircraft based motor. Uh, the Dodge Brothers, they were way ahead of their time. That car is mostly metal in it. All these other cars are wood frames and the wood's dry, it's gonna start breaking. That's what happened to most of old cars like you see, they're full of wood. People would let them set out, the wood would rotten out of them and it just collapsed, it was just thin metal. The Pontiac Carrier is a, is a 1930 and this was, a, a, one of the local dealerships had this car. This car's probably got, I think, 5,000 miles on it and the script on it was for the dealership floor, you know. Most of that stuff was in here, you know, and had it set up and I would have a, like car clubs want to come and, and have picnics and stuff like that. And I can remember one day a Beamer, Beamer pulls up with Texas tags on it and they say, are you the guy with all the movie cars, you know, and we're just passing through and and somehow they had found, you know, how everything's on the internet, pictures of this, that and other and, and looked me up and drove right up my driveway and I thought, you know, maybe, if I just do it just on the weekends and give, you know, people to see the stuff instead of it sitting in a garage where, you're, you know, you're not, not being able to be used, you know. So found the old building and took time, painted everything, put it together, and, you know, I ended up opening up the museum. Most of, most of all these cars in here, you know, that, that was me and my dad, and, uh, you know, he liked the original stuff too, you know, as far as, and the movie cars, but most of these you see in this building. Uh, were mine and he, or you know, our deal together. He passed away before I opened up the museum. He got the, you know, he was here for a lot of the picnics and people coming to the, to the, to here to see the cars here. And you know, he really, that's the reason I really think you enjoy the museum because he loved for people to come and look, you know. Easy going, nicest person you could ever meet in your life. Uh, do anything for anybody, you know. But the, the guy that come check the, 
the meter the other day, he said, uh, you know, he said, I guess it's your dad. He said that I told him I'd heard about cars, you know, over here. And he said, yeah, come on over here. He said, it, it, it made his day because my dad, he took the time to bring him over and show him everything, which my dad probably got as much enjoyment out of it as he did, you know. But, you know, he, he loved for people to look at him. I traded a couple old cars for a 56 Ford, and that was one of his favorite cars. And I, I told a guy it's for sale, you know, and he'd come over here and it was sitting here and the guy was looking around it. He was he was wanting the car, and uh, my dad walked up and he said, what are you doing? I, he, I said, this guy's looking to buy this car. Uh, he said, you didn't tell me you was gonna sell it. I said, why, what is it? He said, he said, I like that car. I said, it's yours. I told the guy, I said, it's not for sale anymore. So I, at least I got to give him something he wanted, you know. I didn't know it at the time, you know, but he it's one of the ones he liked better than any of them, you know, so. I got to do that. He was somebody that, you know, you look up to, you've seen other people look up to. Uh, I, there's no, I've never heard anything, anybody say anything bad about him. You know, just genuine, good guy, you know. When, he, you know, he passed away, people said, you know, you got big shoes to fill. You know, I'm never, never going to fill them shoes. Never. I ain't, I'm not that good a person, you know. Never will be. Over here behind my house, we had a hole. To, it was a pond. We dug it out. And We'd take our four-wheel drives and run through it. And I had a little bitty, just a small Jeep. And my friend had one that was jacked up, big tires on it. My dad had come over with a backhoe and dug it out probably seven feet deep. Didn't even know it. And so my friend comes over and he just never checks or nothing, just busts through it. Sinks the Jeep. I mean, nothing sticking up but the roll bars, you know. And my dad comes easing up. He said, I thought I was going to catch a little Jeep, but I caught a big one, you know. You know, just stuff like that. He, Yeah. <laughs>